Hi, I'm Ashikin. Hi, I'm Shafi. Hi, I'm Nora. Hi, I'm Haiku. And I'm Fahana. I'm going to interview some Singaporean Muslims to understand what they think about the situation between Palestine and Israel. So the whole world has been raging and debating about what's been happening in Israel and Palestine. Gaza was bombed for 11 days, peaceful worshippers were attacked in Al-Aqsa, and innocent Palestinians were forcefully displaced from their homes. People are debating and saying that uh, both sides had attacked each other. However, there is a growing consensus that there are power imbalances that exist in between these two nations, with Palestine having almost close to nothing to defend themselves, and Israel having billions of dollars of military equipment to assist them in their battles. So what do we, Singaporeans, have to do with it? We're 8,000 miles away. Doesn't matter, right? We can't help anything. Right? <laughs> That's why we brought on four individuals from Singapore to ask them what they think about the situation in Palestine and Israel, despite being 8,000 miles away. Uh, what do you know about the recent events in Palestine? Okay, oh, I know recently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, I know it's a hundred year conflict that dates back to like all the way from World War I. In terms of the recent events, I know quite a fair bit how it started initially from the attempts by Israel to uh, evict uh, six Palestinian families in Shekera. For the settlers to actually stay in their house. So it's like basically like be like robbery, <laughs> yeah, you're stealing someone else's property. The Israel police or the military uh, invaded and stormed uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque during prayers and how that led to uh, further tensions. And... Palestine has come under attack under several missiles that was um, shot by Israel, especially during this holy month, and that resulted in many deaths of civilians. Destroying hospitals, uh, media building, residential houses. As what uh, Nova mentioned, I think there's a lot to unpackage. As in the violence, uh, the violence occurred in like eleven days, and then now there is a somewhat ceasefire. There's also another uh, uh attack on uh, Aqsa that I guess it would uh, it does intensify things. Uh, and the escalation of the conflict is now entering to a phase where it's blown up of proportion, and even international media is covering it. I think this is one of the biggest things that people are talking about now. Yeah, these are the uh, some of the more recent events that I know of. Okay. Um, then how did you first hear about all this information? Was this the first time that you heard about Palestine and Israel and the conflict? And what exactly was the first piece of information that you heard? Maybe when I was like a teenager, I would say. And I feel like as a Muslim, you are going to hear about this issue or, or within your religious circles or your families and relatives. It's always framed as a religious issue, like a touch and go kind of thing. Like if they were to talk about Israel, then I can I could sense that there was a lot of hatred or animosity towards uh the the whole issue. I think mine is totally different from him. Like I grew up in a household where we don't really talk about politics. So like my very first exposure was actually from a celebrity that I really like. If I'm not wrong, it was Zayn Malik. And he actually tweeted like something like Free Palestine. And I knew that he got a lot of backlash for tweeting that. So a lot of people felt that the tweet that he tweeted was like religiously charged instead of um, seeing it from a human humanitarian perspective instead. But I didn't have any more information other than that. Only just recently. So it's really recently that I saw on Instagram this guy who always do like funny videos usually but this time he spoke about Palestine. To be Taha, is it? His oh. name? Yeah. Mm. To be honest, I really uh, keep skipping because that's my habit. And then I don't know why my heart moved to actually want to watch it. It was actually about the five facts of Sheikh Jarrah. Because of his video, I went to actually stop, click on the hashtags that they all be posting. And I started being more active in resharing, posting because it's important for people to know about it. Because I was once oblivious. I mean, ignorant also about this kind of thing. Yeah. What kind of uh, institutions that allows for this kind of ignorance to, to exist. So currently, what are your thoughts about the situation? Um, and how has it changed uh, from when you first know about it until now? I think it's quite common to, to feel sad. I would usually feel shocked. How can like, the rest of the world allow for such a humanitarian crisis to just exist for, for so long? Muslim being Muslim, the first word will always come to mind is oh who's news on night. But but not saying that their action is justified, but 
to what degree should we uh, exercise that to make sure that we don't go overboard with, with, with our feedback or comments and all. My first thought was, it's just, oh, it's another conflict in the Middle East. I think after finding out more, you know, like, I just wanted to be neutral and be like, oh, peace. There's a reason why peace has never been an option. There's a lot of, like, Western intervention trying to come in, have peace treaties, you know. The thing about the West coming in and settling problems is that they don't know the history behind it. Um, some sites have motives that are along the lines of violence and they are not going to back down. So I, I would like to highlight on the issue of power imbalance in, in this particular issue, which is very important to take note of. Because you have one side, uh, the Israel, who has absolute power and control over another group which has uh, almost no rights at all. Basically, they don't have an army, they don't have a uh, navy or even an air force. So to you, for you to use military force onto them, it's it doesn't make sense. Someone chose rock, so you start shooting them. There is a huge gap in the power imbalance. When you are, if you are talking about finding a solution towards peace, one side which has a absolute power is supposed to be the one who gives in more than the other side who is on the losing end. So it's more about uh, finding equity. I would say, if you stab me in the back, uh, six inches, then pulling the knife out a few inches does isn't progress. You know, you have to heal the wound. You have to um, compensate for the damage that is done. Israel has to be the one conceding more in order for peace to occur. So your peace treaties are not enough to compensate or to repair or to uh, rebuild the losses that they have endured for such a long period of time. Israel's action, I think it's it's a very concerted effort. I throw a stone to make you react so that I have a reason to say I'm, I'm, I'm defending myself by attacking you. So it seems very well planned uh, to me. They only see what the media have been putting. So actually media plays an important role of like putting honest information instead of choosing and selective and being biased. Even if it's for self-defense, you shouldn't be targeting innocent civilians. What did the kids do wrong to you? They only have like rocks. No one is protecting them. So I don't, I don't see like the fairness in this. I'm just angry at this injustice. <laughs> Honestly, at this point of time, like I, I don't really know what is the best solution. I think the most you could do is to offer support to parties that need it most at this moment. Is those people who are at the most losing end right now, who, are, who have lost everything in their lives and to focus our energy on trying to rebuild their lives. Violence was never really an answer. A lot of lives have been taken, especially children. That's the saddest part of this whole thing. If you're fighting for a war that caused the lives of civilians, then there's something that is very wrong and we're not talking much about it. Right now, currently, while we are having this interview, hundreds of people are probably getting killed or injured right now. But yeah, where are the leaders? Uh, how does this situation affect you personally? Like, what are some emotions that are evoked? I feel very upset. Because, you know, sometimes when you open social media and the first thing you see is about these issues, um, you just want to turn off your phone and not see it. But I think that's the privilege that all of us have on social media is the fact that we don't want to see it anymore, we just turn off social media. and then that. But like for people who are living in Gaza, for example, they don't have this privilege, you know, they can't turn off their phones because it's literally the life that they're having. Puts you in the human perspective of like, if you're already feeling upset about hearing this kind of news, they feel for the people who are going through it also. And I think another thing that a lot of people feel in general, if my friends are like helplessness, how are we going to help these people like so far away from us, you know, like as much as I can repost, as much as um, I educate my friends and stuff like that, I always feel like no matter what I do, is never enough to have like immediate relief to the people who are going through this. I would say that stems from the fact that you're only looking at it from a very simple perspective that there's nothing I can do directly to help them. Seeing it from where I am in Singapore, so what can Singapore do instead? By looking at what Singapore can do, then I can think of what I can do to push towards those things that Singapore can do to help. And that makes me feel a bit more hopeful. I feel like social media has gotten a lot more stronger than it was like even a few years ago. Um, the level of awareness and the level of reach we can have right now on the world is a lot stronger, a lot better. And I feel like maybe the tide can turn this time. I think this is what makes us all um, be so vocal about it because since we can't do anything in a sense, the, the least we could do is to educate others to talk about it, for example. Okay, Shafiq? 
it's so hard to sleep thinking these people are not safe. That frustration definitely is manifested like, in many ways, be it in a discussion online or even at home. The more we put the issue on the table, the more the people in power realise that this is something the population wants. Come on, high five. <laughs> bye bye. Shafiq. Bye bye. Yay. <laughs>